So Stefan Hell uh, is a great personal story as well. Uh, he was incredibly persistent in uh, pursuing this idea that he had that you didn't necessarily need to make a small hole. What you could do is use what was available to you, but you could make one spot of light uh, as small as you could with a, essentially a normal uh, microscope, a good one. Uh, but then you could take another, uh, another uh, light beam that would be subtractive. And instead of being a spot, it would be a donut. And when you subtract the donut from the spot, you're left with a very small hole in the middle. I think anyone who's been a graduate student uh, knows about donut holes that were, were given at uh, seminars that you know, draws in the crowds. Uh, those, those, <laughs> those donut holes are at the nanoscale. And so he was able to beat this idea that we were limited to the size of the wavelength just by uh, combining so those two features and being left with that small hole. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, wonderful coincidences, uh, really, of nanoscience is that it matches the scale of biology. So a synapse right, is 10 or 20 nanometers across. That happens to be where we are in nanoelectronics now. This is the scale that we're starting to reach with these new optical microscopes. And so by, by being able to look at these uh, tiny scales where, our, where we actually function, we hope to learn about the brain, about the rest of ourselves, and then also about all the materials that we're creating at these very small scales. There have already been beautiful uh, images that have come out of uh, the microscope that he developed. And then once he broke through that barrier and people realized that you could do better, then a whole series of other techniques have been developed by others and applied uh, globally. Uh, as we heard, you know, these, uh, some of these are even uh, commercial now, but they're used in labs uh, around the world. And uh, Stefan, given the difficulties he had and the you know, many years he put in uh, really working on his own, he's become a champion for uh, instrument developers. With new tools, uh, you, get, you develop new science. That's how you uh, learn about our world and about you know, all, yeah. all the worlds of all our fields. Uh, and he has not been a revisionist that, oh, I had this great idea, people supported me, and I marched along. He, he talks about how he almost quit science, uh, that, that it was very difficult uh, to persevere, and you know, ultimately he championed, but he comes around regularly you know, to the institute I work at UCLA and other places where we develop a new eyes to the nanoscale world and, and to others and you know, encourages those who are in those you know, decade and yeah. two decade long development uh, projects that we ultimately think will, will uh, open, up, open up new worlds it, to us.